Welcome to part one of a two-part paint series on this D&D Archer. Hey guys, Not So Average Builder here once again. And today we are going to do something different. Uh, we're going to work on the first ever commission build. Uh, this is my sister's, oddly enough. Um, she plays D&D, &D, and this is her figure. This is what she's been playing with since, I'm guessing, for a while. Uh, completely unpainted. The cape I did myself the other day, just to kind of try it out and see how the paint would lay on this stuff. Um, now, mind you, this has brush strokes in it and whatnot. I'm not that worried about it because it's a textured part, for one. For two, I completely did this with unthin paints. I just took it straight out of the pot. I used Demon at Hide. My citadel and that's what i'm going to be using today just because that's what i've got on hand but yeah so i used that laid down a base coat i'm not really happy with how it came out so we already have those in the wet palette if i knock everything over all of those colors are already in the wet palette and we're going to mix our own special colors and stuff like that and then we also have Daruchi violet as a shade now, I may end up making my own um, wash of sorts just because I think it'll look better, but I'll kind of play it by ear and see how this stuff goes. Uh, one other thing, the Mephiston Red. I got that, but I don't know if I'm going to use it. It is in the wet palette, but we'll see how it goes. So let me get the camera all adjusted. I'll put these paints back, and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got everything put away, and I'm ready to use my thinned paints. So basically what I've done is just put them all in the wet palette and from there I can work and do whatever I need to. Um, now I will post a link to the in the description for how I made my wet palette because this is a DIY wet palette and it probably doesn't show up very well on there. So let me fix that. Ah, much better. But yeah, so it was very simple to make. Um, paper towels and non-waxed parchment paper. So I've got all my colors. Now this right here is a dab of water and that's to help me thin things down even more um, because there isn't really, there's just residual water soaking up through. There's really not a whole lot. So if I really need to thin down paints, there's water for that. So I'll move that off to the side and we'll get this. All right, so basically we're just gonna take our base coat and we're gonna apply it over the entirety of what you want it. Uh, I'm just kind of, redoing what I did but with thinned paints so that it kind of eliminates most of those brush strokes. So I'm going to let the base coat dry on the cape and while that's drying uh, we're going to use Abaddon Black just a base coat and we're going to cover where we want the metallic colors. Uh, I was originally just going to go with a basic you know metallic armor but since the theme on this is purple I figured I'd mix some of the purple later on down the road with the metallic shade and make it a metallic purple. And now you can see everywhere that I want to be metallic in the future, I've covered with a black base coat just to give the metallics a, more of a pop later on. So that just makes things a lot easier to lay down metallics. I created this purple using uh, Demonite Hide mixed with some Iron Breaker from Citadel and that gave it that a metallic purple and it looks really well over that black base coat. And what you're gonna do is just apply it over the parts that you want it to be that color and then we'll go in with some highlights later on. Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna take the Jeruchi Violet shade and we're going to go over all of the recesses on where the, the kit has its natural shadows and we're gonna accent those with the shade. Um, some cases where you're wanting to go with a lot of shadows, you can really, really hit it with a lot of the shade. So when you're using the shade, um, you're going to do what's called wet blending. And basically what you're going to use is it's a two brush method. Um, I put it in the recesses and then I take my slightly damp brush and I pull it away from the recesses. Uh, so that way it kind of keeps the contrast not as sharp and it makes it more of a smooth, because if you look at a shadow, it's nowhere near that sharp. They're all blended in. So yeah, that's very simple to do. It takes some time, 
and you can see here I'm using the second brush that's slightly damp with just water and I'm kind of blending it towards the shadow. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. So yeah, and you do that and that pulls the pigments towards the shadow, but it also creates a smooth transition uh, from the deep recess of the shadow. You can't see it right away. The, the regular you can part see the wetness, but you can't see it right away. Soon, after enough layers, you'll be able to see the transition. Another cool thing about shades is that you can kind of use it as a panel line accent. Um, and this way it, it makes the recesses where the, uh, the decorations are on the cloak kind of pop out a little bit more. Okay, so I have decided to stop where I'm at uh, just because time constraints and whatnot. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how the base colors came down, the metallic purple, although it may not show up on camera. Uh, actually looks pretty good in contrast with the regular dark purple um, inlays and then the uh, base purple that we have for the cape. Cape looks relatively dark because I did go a little heavy on most of it with the wash and that's just because there's so many recesses. Look for part two of this video where I do all the highlighting all the raised areas and kind of make those uh, contrasts really pop. Now this is something that I'm terrible at. Anybody can throw a wash on Anybody can paint in the lines, whatnot. It's it's difficult, but it's not that difficult. Now, the next part I have struggled with for many years, and I'm hoping that after watching quite a few videos, I kind of get the basic premise on blending. Like, I could, I could make highlights. I know where they are, and I know where they go, uh, but the problem is blending them. It either looks like, and I realize what I've done with this. I did a wash. But this thing right here, you can clearly see the distinguishing lines. I did a terrible job of blending. Terrible, terrible job of blending. So I found things that I need to work on. I've learned about wet blending and uh, stippling and all those different techniques to try and blend your uh, different paints together. So, but that is it for right now. The wash is still drying, but you can see the darker, deeper purple, which is going to be good. And then on these raised edges and kind of outward, we're going to create the highlight effect. You see how the light's doing it? Well, we're going to do that with paint. So even when you do it like this, you can see it. So yeah, that is it for today. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of my next video. Uh, remember, most importantly, don't just be an average builder. Be a not-so-average builder. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. I'm doing it. It may not be perfect. There may be no color separation right now, but hopefully we can bring this back to life. So yeah, that's all. Uh, have a wonderful day, everyone, and let me know in the comment section below uh, if you like the video or not anything that I can improve on or anything like that. Also, don't forget that I have a Patreon account. It is patreon.com forward slash not so average builder. And there is a link in the description below.